Now I'd like to turn a little bit more focus onto the situation in Israel. As many of us know, in the last year or so, the Israeli government has stepped up what it calls its war against the boycott movement. Using a well-known tactic of Zionists, Netanyahu, in a statement on his Facebook page, compared the boycott movement to a new holocaust. Netanyahu then went further, branding the BDS movement a strategic threat. That means BDS activists, like me, were up there alongside Iran's nuclear weapons. We're there with Hamas, and no doubt we're up there with a few other of Israeli arch enemies. Well, what this also means is that individual activists are seen as an acceptable target. One presumes for whatever actions the Israeli government decide they need to use to achieve their aims. Now we know the Israeli government have allocated millions to fund undisclosed activities to further these aims and that this fight is being led by Israel's Minister of Strategic Affairs and according to that ministry they are gearing up to face BDS, the boycott movement, as if it were a military challenge. Their work is classified but publicly they say their aim is to build, quote, a community of warriors. Now, according to the Ministry, they have recently hired 25 workers whose names are classified. It has an intelligence section run by a former security services operative and receives assistance from, quote, a special unit within the Israeli military intelligence, as well as the secret police. Some of us call these operatives the Hasbara, but they are termed, in whatever way you like it, as a black ops group. So they go out covertly to destroy and undermine people like me. Now some of the people who work in this unit volunteer their services, they're not paid. They operate on social media as well as elsewhere and they can be situated anywhere in the world. One commentator, for example, on this meeting tonight lives in Canada and she openly seeks funding for the work that she does. The truth is, while the boycott movement has made progress in Britain and elsewhere, so have the Hasbara and the Israeli lobby. For example, the boycott movement in France has now been ruled as an activity that discriminates. Therefore, it has been made functionally illegal. I suggest that the ground is already being prepared in Britain for a similar change to occur.